Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve. I hope you're having a wonderful Labor Day weekend with your families and loved ones. I know that I am. And But I just had to comment on the massive backlash that Biden's infamous red speech has unleashed against him and the Democrats. It's beyond beautiful. It's a textbook example of what we call ironic justice, right? Where a person gets hanged by their own gallows, by the very gallows that they built like Haman in the Bible. Last Thursday night's speech, the so-called red speech or the blood red speech, as it turns out, was an abject disaster. The reaction that speech got over the last 48 hours or so has spanned the spectrum from total disgust and repulsion on the one side to merciless ridiculing and mocking on the other and everything in between. It, of course, all started with the optics, right? The blood red background that apparently, apparently CNN, one of the primary propaganda machines for the Democratic Party, CNN, tried to change on live television. Did you hear about this? There have been a number of articles exposing CNN for trying to edit the color of the lights in the background from a harsher blood red color to a softer, like hot pink. You can actually see it on CNN's coverage of what we now know to be a live train wreck, right? You could see the background slowly changing to pink and even Biden's own skin hue gets pinker. So as I understand it, no other network's coverage exemplified the same kind of color change. So you got to ask again, what on earth was CNN thinking? How, how did they think they could get away with that? You got all these other outlets covering the speech. What were they? Th I mean, obviously, they're not the brightest bulbs in the world. And they're admitting by changing the color of the background, they're admitting that it was utterly embarrassing. And they basically got caught in such an admission. It's beyond utterly stupid, let alone being willing accomplices with Biden's attempt at designating half the population as national security threats, right? This is beyond propaganda in its worst form. And as it turns out, it's also propaganda in its you know dumbest form. But obviously, CNN's antics notwithstanding, the, uh, the optics were an utter uh, disaster. I don't know if you know David Portnoy of Barstool Sports. He said it perfectly. He tweeted out, Every time I think Biden and crew can't be dumber, they outdo themselves. Seriously, who gives a speech warning people about how dangerous Republicans are to democracy while having a background that looks like the Soviet Union and Hitler had a baby? <laughs> I mean, is that not perfect? David Portney, man, that is gold. But then when it came to the content of what Biden said in his ridiculously desperate and deranged speech, it didn't take long for even the most loyal leftist partisan media outlets to begin distancing themselves from Biden. The Washington Post, of all places, published a piece on Friday written by their editorial board, arguing that Biden's red speech was way too partisan and way too harsh on well-meaning Americans. The board went on to say that the speech, in their words, quote, fell short of uniting the country. Talk about an understatement, my gosh. But it fell short, and they claimed that Biden came off as, quote, scolding and demeaning. Now, keep in mind, they're saying this at the same time the Washington Post is in complete agreement with Biden. Again, to reiterate, I, I talked about this in our live stream yesterday. We all know Biden did not write that speech. He can't, he can't even tie his own shoes. Biden is just a puppet speaking the words of a ventriloquist. And the ventriloquist is a collection of radical cultural Marxist ideologues like the editorial board of the Washington Post who want as many people as possible in this nation to hate and despise and loathe ultra maga patriots as much as they do. So the Washington Post made it clear that the MAGA movement is indeed a threat to democracy. Democracy, of course, now being redefined as excluding anything and everything that calls into question leftist progressivism, right? That's the MO of the Washington Post and the New York Times and CNN and MSNBC and the Democratic Party as a whole, along with gutless rhino neocons. We've seen over the last decade an increasingly brazen attempt by the left to redefine things like democracy and equality and sexuality and gender and race, even recession 
in totalizing progressive terms where no dissent is allowed, which of course is the antithesis of liberalism. Right? The fact that liberals are now trying to redefine everything in accordance with progressive norms with no possibility of thinking otherwise, of legitimate dissension from the norms, from those norms is the antithesis of liberalism. It's totalitarianism, it's autocracy. And the beauty is that Biden's speech really seemed to take the blinders off from a lot of people's eyes. And that's what the Washington Post is freaking out over. Joe, you're supposed to persuade most Americans that a limited number of people are a national security threat. And all you managed to do is piss off the entire Republican Party and scare independents into thinking that you've gone full-blown totalitarian. Good job, Joe. Keep riding your bikes. So when you see even leftists like the lunatics at the Washington Post distancing themselves from Biden, you know it was a bad night last Thursday night. But you know what's even worse? Biden distancing himself from himself. <laughs> That's right. I mean, we've been seeing the White House completely backtrack, circling the wagons on that speech. They're doing everything they possibly can to say, no, 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 no. We, we, we weren't talking about every Republican. Of course not. We love Republicans. Why would we say all that? We love Republic. It's just that terrible Trump and those horrible J6 insurrections. That's all we were talking. That's it. I mean, kid you not. That's exactly what Biden's been saying over the last 24 hours. He's totally distancing himself from the speech. I mean, seriously, it's it's hilarious. You know what they're saying? What pundits are saying right now? Biden's people are looking at the internal poll numbers, the post speech poll numbers, and they're flipping out. They're freaking. They're only now realizing what an utter disaster of a speech that was. And they, because they're the ones ultimately in charge, they are now telling Biden, dude, you got to walk back your comments big time. The sooner people forget the speech, the better. OK, and that's what they're relying on. They're relying on the lamestream media to push another you know, 24-7 anti-Trump story to fill up the headlines so that this ridiculous train wreck will be long forgotten. But again, the joke's on them. I don't think we're going to let anyone forget that disgusting, reprehensible insult to the office of the presidency that took place last Thursday night. We are going to go back to that monstrosity again and again and again and continue to remind more and more voters of what has happened to the Democratic Party, a party that is increasingly criminalizing dissent, weaponizing the legal system, and redefining half the population as national security threats. The game is on, gang, and we're playing to win, and win bigly. <laughs> as always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on the Dems panicking over Patriot militias taking over the bluest state in the entire nation. It's going to make your day. It's going to make your Labor Day weekend. So make sure to click on that link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.